and uh, you're in for a real treat because I had no idea what I was doing and I'm sitting next to two experts who do. My name is Diane Miller, you're watching the Just Kidding Around Show. Thank you so much for joining us. And I am with two wonderful men that have driven down from Mason County to be with us today. This is Carl Black and David Ermintraub. And in front of us we have, what do we have? Um, a large collection of uh, antique singing bowls. Okay, so about 40 maybe? Not uh, quite, 30? I think about 20 here. So there's about 20 singing bowls. Now, singing bowls would be their nicknames, right? Um, well, I guess, I don't know. Singing bowl is pretty much what I learned. I'm, I'm sure there's a Nepalese or an Indian name for them, uh, but uh, they're just a, a bronze bowl. They're made of bronze, copper and tin, and um, they just have amazing tonal qualities and harmonics. That's what makes them so special is they, there's five different notes that each bowl plays. There's a fundamental struck note, then two octaves up, there's a different note on the rim. So you have all these combinations of sound, like a, an E and an A, an E struck and an A, but there's other notes in that in there too. And, and uh, so when you hit a bowl, you hear this just all, it's just, the sound is just kind of flowing. I mean, it's not just a note, you know? And when you play 20 of them, boy, you just, you, it's like a sound bath. Yeah. You're just being bathed in all these sounds and... Uh, kind of goes right through you, doesn't it? Um, through you, around you. Yeah. Um, it's all about vibration and everything in the universe vibrates. And, and we are uh, so is there a factory that makes these? No, these are made like an old, old fashioned way. If, um, if you want to get on YouTube, go to uh, Singing Bowl Village and, and st there's a place in India. They're made, st they're still made new ones in India, in, in Nepal in Kathmandu, but in India, there's a place near Bengal, India, of 5,000 people, and the whole town makes singing bowls. And yeah. they're just little huts, dirt floors, everybody's barefoot. They have a person on a lathe, like a bicycle, turning a lathe, it's just a fire that they stick a blank, a round blank in the fire. They bring it out when it's red hot, and they got people with uh, sledgehammers, three of them, oh my hitting it and the guy's turning it and they're rounding it and then they put it back in and they do it some more. It takes a lot of effort to make a bowl. To I make mean. one bowl. So each one of these is handmade. Yeah. Probably on another continent, probably not in the United States. <laughs> no, no, it would die. It takes about, uh, they said it takes a village. There's probably five people at least that work on each bowl. Wow. And I don't know, I, they, you know, five people might be able to make one in a day, but uh, it takes a long time to, to take a blank and then you can see how nice this is. I mean, you can see the pound marks, but it's still yes, you can. Uh, beautifully finished. And, uh, and they don't know what it's gonna sound like till they take it and stick it in the water to cool it off. Oh. Then they hear the sound. So they huh. never, so it's kind of a surprise. Yeah. If you were a master bowl maker, you probably, all no, your bowls maybe. would be good, but, yeah. but you'd pull it out and go, oh wow, this one's wow. really special. So. And what metals do they put in these? Well, uh, there's a lot of myths about seven metal bowls and stuff, but people have actually uh, taken broken ones and sent them in for uh, metallurgical analysis, and they've pretty much come back mostly copper and tin with some variables, you know. Yeah. It's, it's just that, you know, what makes them, the difference in how, I mean, you see they're all shaped difference, the thickness here, the, the, thickness, the thickness on the bottom, um, they all produce different tones. The, the thicker bowls, like I said, produce a higher tone, and the mm -hmm. thinner bowls produce a lower tone. Then you have bowls with big lips like this, and that produces a different tone. And so somebody once said, they, uh, there's a fellow in England that's been into the bowl since the 70s, and uh, I think he described 150 different types of bowls he found. Oh know? my goodness. So, so this, that one up there is almost a totally different shape. Second over this one? The, yeah. That's What's from that about? That's from India. It's called a Monty Bowl or Jewel. It's one of the only bowls where the struck tone and the rim tone are the same note. Oh. It, it plays almost a, a, what they call it a sine wave. Uh, it's, it's, there, it's an amazing... <laughs> I 
if the viewers at home can feel that vibration or can hear it. And then you can hear it's the same note as the mm, And that's unusual then. Whereas um, generally like a D struck would play an E rim tone. Uh -huh. you know, so. so we did a show before. Did you bring that ball? Uh, I could have. Uh, really? I don't remember seeing I, it. And this one over here looks real old too. Yeah. Are are some of these, which one of these bowls is the oldest? Um, probably that one this over guy's there. This guy is pretty old. 15th century. 15th century? Yeah. And wow. The, this is a 16th century bowl here. Wow. So, Make sure I yeah. Get that down. And then what to your right? Carl. These little cups? Well, no, I was worried about those hanging things oh, that these. look like gongs, or they're yeah. not gongs. What are those things? Uh, they're, well, they're from uh, Burma or Miramar, whatever you what the new name is. Uh, but they're called uh, Kisis, K-Y-E-E-Z-Y-E-E. -E -E. Okay. And uh, it's a spinning gong. They use them for oh. meditation, the monks. And, uh, you know, let's... Mesmerized, but but it, I want to thank you for letting me play this. And I do want to ask one thing before I go. When I was going around, and it would like um, there was a sound that I knew was wrong. I don't know how to explain the sound. Do you know what I mean when it? Well, you know, it takes a constant pressure. Okay. You know, usually you start slow. Most people will start real fast. I was in some place and somebody was trying to teach their daughter. They're just going fast and they're yeah. jumping all around and making noise. And you want to start real slow. real slow. And as the sound builds up, then you can add a little more pressure. But to get the most beautiful sound, you have like a, a really nice pressure that's even all the way okay, around. Okay, so that, because you know that kind of like a rippling kind of sound. Yeah, well, so yeah. that's what I was doing. It's probably, was, yeah, kind of. Chattering? Yes, okay. And that was, I didn't do it the whole time, but I. Yeah, ugh, but you did great. Like wow. you know, for, My hand hurts. Uh -huh. so you told me to hold it like a pencil. I didn't do that, but when if I ever get to play. You have more like control that. when you're down closer to it. You know, the, oh. when you're up here like this, see, it can bounce around when you're down here. So you, that was got part more of it, too. I was yeah. up there. Well, I will get out of the way. I'm sure they don't want to hear me talk. <laughs> Thank you, guys, both well, of you, you, Dave and Carl, for yeah. coming down. And um, I'm going to get out of your way. Okay. So, Let me have that. And you're going to just I'll play. I'm not going to come we'll back. We'll try to get out of our way, too. So, you, <laughs> so yeah, if you could put that one right. back. I'll put my chair. And thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you.